Welcome back. Uh, another Thursday. Uh, it's much later than I had planned, but after dinner I started working on shimming cabinets and getting those uh, installed, and I took a little too long with that, but I'm going to stay up a little bit later tonight anyway to get through this. Um, so let's take a look together. Uh, I In the last video, I finished the first pass which was very rough, but at least it has all the information down. And I've still got, you know, all of my notes and other information there. But what I usually try and do with the second pass is I'll go through and look for any large things that need to be changed. I'll also sometimes do uh, the second pass where I'm trying to slim it down uh, and clarify language, things like that. But I'm really looking to make this overall just more structurally sound as well as to to check the pacing so as i jump straight into this right now there are already a lot of changes i want to make i could get into the nitpick i'm still not worried too much about uh punctuation and spelling and capitalization all that stuff like I, I will worry about that and if i see it i will catch it but that's not the focus of the second pass the second pass is really trying to take what I had from the first pass and, and make it that much better. Um, since I wrote last week, I've had a thought about possibly adding another scene where um, Adam gets to spend more time with his uh, sister and talk to her about it and about how, you know, how she's been seeing the zombification. Because when my kids are seeing something happen in the family, I'll often overhear them. They, they chatter away and come up with, you know, all of these ideas of why things are the way they are, what's going to happen. And so it, it makes sense that that is a scene I could add. So down here, I'll make a, a little note. So possibly add scene with Adam talking to his sister about zombies and the family. So that's something I could add. If it makes sense, I will. Otherwise, that's a great thought, but I, I won't actually put it in. So let me start at the beginning, and I'm just going to go through and figure out what's working, what's not, and I'll make changes. Actually, very quickly, I'm going to save this as a uh, secondary copy. So uh, zombie fungus... second draft so this way I've got the original so if I need to look back at it I'll be able to all right so Jerome's headless corpse rose and began to pursue Esther and Fred Adam watched in horror as his two friends climbed as fast as they could to get away I'm already wanting to make some changes so Adam screamed in horror. While they climbed. So I'm going to remove that it's his friends. At the very beginning of writing this, it felt like I needed to specifically point out, oh no, it's his friends. We'll get to that. Uh, Jerome's headless corpse rose and began to pursue Esther and Fred. Adam screamed in horror while they climbed as fast as they could to get away. And that way it almost gives you the illusion that he's there with them. Eh, which I'm not sure if I, I like that. Um, Okay, uh, uh, I'm already regretting this. 
Adam screamed in horror watching them climb out of his reach, but then you think it's Adam's reach. Okay, so sometimes I start doing stuff and I don't like it and I will go back. Okay, Adam screamed, watching his two friends climb as fast as they could to get away. Tina, Greg, and Shanna moved towards Jerome, trying to stop him. They were more aggressive than Adam had ever seen them. Uh, Adam's heart... Uh, let me come back here. They were more aggressive than Adam had ever seen them. But things change when there is a true emergency. Only a week ago they were live they were happy and living in peace and harmony, then the or harmony, then the puff came. Seemingly innocuous, those closest to it began to change. Within a few days, Jonathan was gone, but his body kept moving as if controlled by a remote. Where he was kind, peaceful, and lived only to make music before, he turned into a creature of nightmares, walking with a will that was not his own and becoming a host for strange white growths. He became aggressive in his attacks. While the affected or the infected became violent, the scariest part was that even without actual contact, the puff spread. Everyone in contact began to change. Oh. Let's see. It changed everyone it touched or it, it landed on. Some becoming puppeted monsters themselves and others acting in violence to protect and retreat. Oh, it changed everyone. Yeah, okay. Some become puppeted monsters themselves. Okay, the puff changed everyone. Some... The infected becoming puppeted monsters and those left mm, It seemed to Adam that all of his little friends will finally fall prey to the fungal form of zombification. Okay, let's try this out now. Jerome's headless corpse rose and began to pursue Esther and Fred. Adam screamed, watching his two friends climb as fast as they could to get away. Tina, Greg, and Shanna moved towards Jerome, trying to stop him. They were more aggressive than Adam had ever seen them, but things change when there is a true emergency. Only a week ago, they were happy and living in peace and harmony. Then the puff came. Seemingly innocuous, those closest to it began to change. Within a few days... Do, 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 do. I'm going to get rid of that. 
Okay, uh, let me go through this one more time. Jerome's headless corpse rose and began to pursue Esther and Fred. Adam screamed, watching his two friends climb as fast as they could to get away. Tina, Greg, and Shanna moved towards Jerome, trying to stop him. They were more aggressive than Adam had ever seen them before. Only a week ago, they were happy and living in peace and harmony. Then the puff came. Seemingly innocuous, those closest to it began to change. Within a few er, yeah, within a few days, Jonathan was gone, but his body kept moving as if controlled by a remote. Where he was kind, peaceful, and lived only to make music before, he turned into a creature of nightmares, walking with a will that was not his own, and becoming a host uh, for strange white gross. While the infected became violent, the scariest part was that even without actual contact, the puff spread. It seemed to Adam that all of his friends, all his friends, or all his little friends would finally fall prey to this fungal form of zombification. Adam couldn't take it anymore. Uh... So there's a lot of stuff that I added in um, that I can now start to remove. Rubbing away, or rubbing his eyes, hands shaking. Adam sat up, or sat straight, and backed away from the ant hill. Still watching the ants try to fend off what was left of Jerome the cicada's body, he was watching the now familiar puff of escape the fungus on the corpse and land on their carapaces. Esther, Fred, and many others recognizing the danger were busy pulling debris to block the entrances to the ant hill, leaving the most heroic outside to face their doom. Adam could see his family in the conflict. That would explain things since the Easter egg hunt. The puff must be getting them too. Dad said that Uncle Solomon was a mindless and uncaring oaf. Maybe he'd become a zombie. Adam's mind spiraled. He couldn't see his cousins anymore, and everyone was on edge. I kind of want to remove this part. I'm going to put it uh, just in brackets right now. Um, just to... Put it aside, because I think this would be better if it happened when he was at home and possibly during the family meal. Um, maybe things would change at that point. So Adam's mind spiraled. He couldn't see his cousins anymore, and everyone was on edge. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get rid of all that stuff. So Adam could see his family in the conflict. That would explain things since the Easter egg hunt. The puff must be getting them, too. Dad said that Uncle Solomon was a mindless and uncaring oaf. Maybe he had become a zombie. Adam stood up, walked back from the fence line, and sat down on a chair by the fire pit. He practiced his breathing that he had been learning by, or practiced the breathing. I'm going to do the slow breathing. He practiced the slow breathing that he had been learning by watching his parents after their stressful interactions lately, and then he looked around. His brow was dripping salt and his shirt was soaked. He would love to go to the pool, but nobody could drive him today. Instead, he watched as Patrick and Michelle, two of the chipmunks that had moved into his backyard last fall, ran around after each other uh, along the fences and over the garden beds. I'm just going to put last autumn. He could see the hole where Chuck, one of the neighborhood rabbits, had dug before spying Adam and running back over to Mrs. Monsito's more open backyard. Mom, can I come in to play now? said Adam at the back door. No, came his mother's voice. Get a drink from the hose and go find some friends to play with if you're bored. Um, and that's one thing I'm going to make a note about. Um, and this is a normal part of my, my cleanup phase. Um, mother, father... Naming pass. So that way I know that 
this is something I need to look through to, to get clarity with how I'm addressing his mother and father throughout this process. Okay. Uh, getting back over here. Adam made a face and said, fine. Or said, fine, before shutting the door and stomping off. He opened the side gate and walked out to the sidewalk and down the, to the stream. Making sure to shut the side gate behind him. He went down to the stream by the neighborhood garden. On his way, he scared Lydia, Jeff, and the new fawn that he hadn't named yet. You're not supposed to eat from the garden, called Adam. Old man Sumner will get angry again if you do. Adam looked up because of the movement and noise as a medium-sized something hit the stream, sending up the splash. I like the description, but I'm not sure how well that's going to read. So um, there's some of these things that I may leave in uh, if I'm unsure about them. And that's also what I have uh, test readers for. And don't worry, we'll go through that phase as well, where I'll send this out for folks to test read and give me feedback. Um, so I'm just going to put another... Uh, just question mark here. Okay, there are better ways to do this. Um, I often just do it this way rather than actually making notes, but I know a lot of people like to have uh, tracking and they'll make notes and stuff on the side. Um, when I'll usually do that is when I'm... So here's where my process is usually a little bit different. With the second pass, I'll usually go through and do some larger stuff, but then for a third pass and beyond, I'll actually print it out. I like having a red pen and you know printed paper where I go through, write, make notes in the comments, or uh, notes in the, uh... oh, it's late, I apologize. Um, yeah, uh, I, I make notes in the margins and everywhere else. Uh, so I'll just, yeah, I'll just leave that there for now as, as a question. Um, but yeah, that, that's usually a third pass where I actually print it out and start making comments on paper. Um, all right. So medium size, something hit the stream, sending up a splash. Uh, why are you talking to a deer called Sadu through splutters? Why did you fall in the water? Asked Adam running up to the bank, trying to grab a crawdad and your talk and made me lose balance. You get any yet? Look in the bucket, said Sadu, a jagged grin spreading wide as he stepped out of the water. There were five inside. Adam's best record was three in one go, and that was using hot dog bits as bait. Sadu went back to fishing, and Adam took a stick to play with the crawdads. They looked an awful lot like some of the bugs he had been playing with earlier, and his mind went back to his insect friends. I am going to remove that. Because it's a lot of stuff. With the insect-like crawdads and then i'm hoping my audience will make that connection sadu went back to fishing and adam took a stick to play with the insect like crawdads i wonder if these will get taken over by the puff too said adam the what asked sadu the puff repeated adam the thing that's been turning all the cicadas and ants in my backyard into zombies you got zombies said sadu moving over to sit by adam so cool how did you get zombies it's not cool said adam he was horrified at the thought sadu just didn't know he had here he hadn't seen them. It was horrible and somehow inevitable. It just spread and didn't care about who it affected. Okay, so I think this is good, but at the same time it starts getting a little long and preachy, and I don't necessarily need it. So Sadu just didn't know. He hadn't seen them. Um I'm gonna just put this 
here as well. Okay, um, Adam did his best to explain the zombie situation to Sadu, expecting a change. All that happened was Sadu got more and more excited. Um, Sadu got more and more excited, and Adam knew that for the next week... Uh, let's see. This is where I can pull in this section. I'm just going to remove this now because I've. All right. Adam does best to explain the zombie situation to Sadu. Hoping. Uh, hoping that Sadu could understand the horror. Instead, Sadu got more and more excited, and Adam knew that for the next few weeks they would end up pretending to be zombies. They continued to talk and play until Adam saw his father's car go by on the main road. By the time he got to the house, his father was already shutting the garage door, and Adam had to run around back to get inside. Okay, so this is... I'm not happy with this. And same thing... I'm kind of wanting to introduce another scene here. Um, do, 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 do. Cause he's got his sister, Jennifer, who's writing on a project, but I'm not sure that I really like that. He, okay. So, Let's see. Better get back quickly or we'll be in trouble again. No, I don't I don't want to start it off like that. Let's see. Okay. Dinner time called Jennifer, Adam's sister, she was walking down the, uh, Adam ran to the sidewalk to head home with her. My problem is, is right now, um, this is a lot of information before I even get, uh, I want it to feel more fluid. I want them there to be like one movement to the next, to the next. And right now this was feeling like a place where I was getting stuck, um, and trying to explain everybody all at once. Uh, and sometimes that's not bad. You know, it's like, Hey, I'm, here's the introduction. Here's all the people let's move on. But I wasn't really happy with it, and I did want a conversation possibly with his sister. Let's see. Ah. All right, so I was, uh, let's see, there was this, there's this part up here that I had set to the side, um, not being able to see his cousins, all this stuff. 
I'm going to bring it down to here. And this is where I'm going to introduce some of this stuff as he's talking with Jennifer. You think they'll yell again? Asked Adam. Maybe. His mom said when you can play with uh, Alice again. No, said Jennifer. I don't think we'll ever get to play with our cousins again. Okay. And this may not actually work out. This may be, uh, I may be sidetracking it a little bit too much. But let's see if I can get this a little bit smoother. The garage door was shut and... When they went inside, let's see, mother was trying to calm down little Benny as he had been fighting off a rash recently. Dad's coat was hung up and he was starting to pull food out of the fridge or starting to pull okay starting to prepare uh, Dad's coat was hung up and he was looking in the open fridge like it was a puzzle that needed to be resolved or needed to be solved. When the phone rang Everyone jumped like a fire alarm had just gone off. Adam and Jennifer didn't dare move. Uh, actually, I'll just do Adam didn't dare move for fear of being noticed. Uh, 
darn spam callers said Adam's father slamming the phone down and stomping back to the kitchen or stomping back to the fridge the air was mood was electric and, and Adam couldn't seem to relax as his neck hairs stood on edge again stood on edge neck hairs stood up okay do 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 Like an air raid siren had just gone off. Okay. Let's see. He slowly tiptoed took off his shoes and was tempting to sneak up to his or sneak to the stairs to get up to his room. Then that's where I jump back in here. When his dad walked up behind him and began to shadow every movement that Adam made. Adam turned and father remained behind him. He started to speak, but his dad blurted out the same uh, at the same time, cutting him off. He raised an arm and his dad's shadow on the wall raised an arm. Adam started to grin, even though he was trying very hard not to. He walked straight up to a wall, turned around quickly, and said, Dad? What? responded Adam's father, mimicking his tone. Stop being so grumpy and help me cook. Here, let me throw this. You too, Jen. But I don't want to, said Adam, semi-flopping. Me neither. Neither. Said Jennifer. trying to run uh, trying to sneak to the basement too bad said father fully flopping with his tie askew i don't want an adult anymore you too gotta cook dinner dad repeated adam stop being a kid don't wanna i'm gonna be a kid from now on and you have to go to work and take care of everything Yeah, jo said mother, joining in. I'm just going to do said mother. Jennifer, 
you get to take care of the baby and I'm going on a cruise adulting sucks Adam and I'm gonna just get a sister in on this and Jennifer or wait Adam leaned against the wall and started to laugh, partially out of nervous embarrassment as his mother and father began to throw a full size or to throw full size tantrums just the way he and his sister used to. As his father continued well beyond when mother thought it reasonable to stop, laughter began rising from the family room, which felt wonderful until B Benny began to cry again. Dad, knowing not to press his luck, went back to the kitchen, holding Adam's hand, and they set her. And they set about getting frozen meatballs in the oven and a pot of water boiling on the stove for the noodles. Or, okay, while Jennifer got a pot of water boiling on the stove for the noodles. Okay, when they sat down to eat, Adam was feeling connected to his family again. Mother was smiling, and Dad was asking everyone about their day. Adam brought up Sadu catching five crawdads in one go, but didn't say anything about the zombies. As Dad continued asking around the table, and everyone got sillier and sillier with their responses, um, Adam felt a darkness closing in. He kept retreating into his headspace, and a pain was forming in his chest as his mind kept getting stuck on a loop of the headless Jerome. Uh... Let's see. He couldn't get rid of the image of the uh, Let's see. He couldn't stop thinking about the headless Jerome. And the more he thought, the more his chest hurt. After dinner came the nightly scripture and prayer and then getting ready for bed. Adam threw his now used floss in the trash and was just about to head upstairs as he passed by his father's office. His dad was busy getting his side projects uh, finished up before he could go to sleep for the night. Adam paused for a moment at the door. He felt an impulse to talk to his dad, but the thought of disturbing him made Adam's heart beat, heart beat faster. He also couldn't quite get his legs to work enough to move him toward his bed. He stood still, pondering on everything that had been running faster and wilder through his mind all evening until it hit a point where he had to do something. Until... I'm trying to think of a better way to say this. Um... trying to find a good way of describing this where it because this this works i mean it hit a point where he had to do something but i'm trying to think of it in more descriptive terms so it's that feeling where you've been feeling stuck you've been feeling immobile and just you almost build up a vibration like you have to do something 
yell, scream, jump, move, anything to break out of the funk that you're in. Uh, till his body began vibrating and moving on its uh, its own. Except that doesn't... I know what I mean. My audience won't know what I mean. So I'm trying to figure out a good way to do that. So let me step that back. All right, well, for now, I'll leave that until it hit a point where you had to do something. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to, I got to do something. I got to come back and reevaluate that. All right. By the way, there's a lot of other ways to do this. Let me just do it this way as well, because this is an easier way of like, hey, I need to check this out. Um, I think I've already cleared up the other parts that were questionable up here. Maybe this is a better way for me to do this. Like I said, normally I just go through and do the rewrite for the second pass, and then the third pass, I do it on paper. Um, but since I'm doing this digitally with you, I'll, I'll make little marks. Okay. Dad, said Adam. What's up, son? Responded his father. Is Uncle Solomon a zombie? If I've ever met one, said his dad, not looking away from his screen. Uh, mindless zombie? I'll just do zombie. Cause he's not going to say something like really derogatory right now. Like he's trying to be sensitive about the subject. Um... Okay, so after another moment, Adam continued toward the stair, the, the staircase. When he put his right foot on the first step, the sound of Benny crying and his mother calmly cooing at Benny from somewhere above, st above stopped him. Adam nearly began crying himself. He needed comfort, but not the kind Benny was getting. He needed to understand, but the thoughts were too big for him to handle. Adam sat down and began counting and breathing. He would have to face his dad, really face his dad, if anything was going to change or improve. He did one more run through the breathing, and with a tight chest and stomach that felt like rolling waves, he walked back to his dad's office. Let's see. He hesitated. I'm coming back up here. Ah, I'm still not happy. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that. So I'll step back. Undo, undo, undo. Come on. There we go. All right. Ah, I'm going to reapproach that. Walk back to his dad's office. Dad, said Adam. What son? Responded his father, frustration sneaking into his voice. Are we going to become zombies too now? I hope not, said his father. Otherwise, no one else will be there to stop the horde. Now get to bed. I have a lot of project, or I have a lot of projects still due tonight. And I had... Now, let's see. But I don't want to be a zombie, said Adam. It would be horrible. I don't want Mom, Jennifer, or Benny to get their heads eaten. If it's anything like what happened to Jerome, it it will be awful. It'll be awful. 
Why couldn't anyone have stopped Uncle Solomon from catching it? Isn't there anything we can do to help? Adam's father, er, Adam's father looked up for the first time during their exchange. He t looked long and deep in Adam's eyes, which were starting to fill. Adam blinked under his father's gaze and wiped the tears away before they could drip. Hold on now, said er, searching gaze. Hold on now, said Adam's father. This isn't going the way I thought the conversation was playing out. I think you need to explain things a little more clearly to me. Sorry for bothering your work, said Adam, wiping his eyes again. No need for that, said his father. This is probably more important. Come in and sit. Adam did as he was told and sat in the little chair in the corner. Now what's this about zombies, son? You said Uncle Solomon was a zombie, said Adam. I did, said Adam's father, but it wasn't meant to be taken literally. But zombies are real, said Adam. If Uncle Solomon is isn't yet again going just for the rolling if uncle solomon isn't a zombie then why can't i see any of my cousins anymore is it my fault did i do something wrong again okay so because of that i'm actually going to go back i'm going to make a little bit of a change up here while it's on my mind go back up here Or ant. Or Aunt Agatha again. Okay, has mom said when you can play with Alice or Aunt Agatha again? No, said Jennifer, sighing. Uh, yeah, let's go for that right now. Okay. So that way he's not directly going, oh, yeah, it's the cousins. It's, you know, Alice and Aunt Agatha again. Okay. But, and that way here I'm calling out the cousins specifically. Okay. Uh, then why can't I see any of my cousins anymore? Is it my fault? Did I do something wrong again? No, son, you're doing just fine. If anyone in this family is to blame, it would be me. I disagree with a lot of the things your uncle and a few of the other family members have been saying and promoting. In fact, we are at such odds that it's... Uh, it is it's become painful to be around each other and I don't want you kids to get caught in the middle of the fight see dad that's what I mean is whatever Uncle Solomon caught spreading to Bob, Jeff and Nancy are you worried it'll, I'll catch it from them in a way son yes said his father looking a little ashamed sometimes a wrong idea or belief can do more damage than a physical ailment I guess I was trying to protect you but dad, said Adam, you always told us that we should love people, even if they believe different than us. That we have been taught how to love each other and help each other, and we know good from bad. Why is this different? Adam's father's brow bunched up tight as he looked at the floor for a moment before responding. You know what, son? You're absolutely right. I'm being a hypocrite, and I've been sending you the wrong message. We should love people, and I don't need to keep you from people with different ideas as long as we can still communicate, work through things. I'm sorry I've screwed up, and I was wrong. Okay, so all of this is feeling long and preachy. Um, and part of it is kind of my voice because when I talk with my kids, I speak with them as adults. I end up having longer drawn out explanations and um, I'll probably over explain uh, as many of us dads do. But for the story, this is starting to feel long. Like I want the same kind of messaging, but it's it's feeling a little bit long. Um, so I'm gonna need to reapproach that. Okay, uh, it's okay, Dad. I love you. Love you too," said his father. Now get to bed. Adam began walking back to or walking.
to the stairs, but stopped at the bottom again. When he heard the soft lullaby, or er, but stopped. When he heard the soft lullaby from his mother floating down. Okay, Adam began walking to the stairs, but stopped when he heard the soft lullaby, lullaby from his mother floating down. If he went up now, he would wake up the baby, and he didn't want to get in trouble for that. He would have to wait a few moments until he was sure he could sneak into the room without causing a disturbance. Hello, Solomon. Or, hello, Solomon, came his father's voice. I know it's been a bit, and I, but I need to call and apologize. No, no, it was every bit as much me. I'm sorry. Adam snuck back to the doorway and peeked around the corner. Well, I don't want to get into that again with you. I just want to let you know that I love you and that I hope we get to see each other again soon. Maybe for the upcoming reunion if it is still on, or else we can catch a game one of these Saturdays. It would be better to talk through anything deeper than that in person anyway. I hope things have been going well for you. Adam pulled away from the doorway and stopped. Adam, came his father's voice, I do need you to explain what you meant by zombies are real, but it's... It is... It's past your bedtime, so please stop sneaking around and we can talk in the morning. Good night. Uh, good night, Dad, said Adam. His father went back to talking with Uncle Solomon on the phone, and Adam, smiling, tiptoed upstairs to dream about crawfish and zombie bugs. Okay, so... Got that. I still need to do the father-mother naming pass. Um, I want to do one more check. I'm, I'm getting close to that hour mark on this oh let me step back from there I think I'll keep that for now, and then we'll see how it plays out. All right, let me come back down here. So there's two remaining sections that I'm, I'm not really happy with, um, at least for the second pass. And once more, things could change dramatically by the third pass or the fourth pass, or, you know, when I get... Uh, feedback from people writing is a process it's not just writing a story once and having it done it's it's a lot of back and forth um but this is still bothering me a lot and so i want to get this a little bit more clean and i want to address it. let me do the smaller part first and then we'll we'll deal with the big one and then i'll do a, a final read through of its current state or i may hold off on the read through until the next video to start it off but um do, 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 do. okay That feels a little bit better. Okay, ignoring the problem. Uh, he also couldn't quite get his legs to work enough to move him toward his bed. Ignoring the problem seemed worse than what he felt like he need Worse somehow than what he felt like he needed to do. Dad, said Adam. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm feeling a little bit better about that, but we'll see as we go forward. Okay, so that part I like. Um, but zombies aren't real, said Adam. If Uncle Solomon isn't a zombie, then why can't I see any of my cousins anymore? It's my fault that I do something wrong again. Very natural that, to blame himself and to feel like somehow he's done this. Uh, okay.
Okay, so that I don't mind. Maybe this in a way, son. Yes, said his father, looking a little ashamed. I don't want you catching any wrong thinking. Um, okay. Yet again, Adam's getting preachy. My kids get this preachy, and they'll go long form on me to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, and what I've told them before in the past. So this isn't out of character, but it's also, it's still slowing the flow a little bit for me. That I don't mind. So let me... Do that. You know what, son? You're absolutely right. I'm... Uh, except I need a little bit more of a change than this. Okay. Uh... Okay, let me go through it again really quick right now. See how it's feeling with those couple changes. Sometimes a few little changes are enough to change the floor and flow and make it feel good. And so I can have the little bit longer bits of narration. Um, so I'll, let's read through it really fast. So, uh, okay, what's this about zombie son? You said Uncle Solomon was a zombie, said Adam. I did, said Adam's father, but it wasn't meant to be taken literally. But zombies are real, said Adam. If Uncle Solomon isn't a zombie, then why can't I see any of my cousins anymore? Is it my fault? Did I do something wrong again? No, son, you're doing just fine. If anyone in this family is to blame, it would be me. I disagree with a lot of the things your uncle and a few of the other family members have been saying and promoting. In fact, we are at, uh, we're... Uh, we're at such odds that it's become painful to be around each other, and I don't want you kids to get caught in the middle of the fight. See, Dad, that's what I mean. Is whatever Uncle Solomon caught spreading to Bob, Jeff, and Nancy, are you worried I'll catch it from them? In a way, son, yes, said his father, looking a little ashamed. I don't want you to ca want you catching any wrong thinking. But, Dad, said Adam, you always told us that we should love people even if they believe different than us. That we have been taught how to love each other and help each other and no good from bad. Why is this different? Adam's father's brow bunched up tight as he looked at the floor for a moment before responding. You know what, son? You're absolutely right. I'm being a hypocrite and I've been sending you the wrong message. We should love people and I don't need to keep you from people with different ideas as long as we can still communicate and work through things. I'm sorry. I've screwed up. I was wrong. It's okay, Dad. I love you. Love you too, said his father. Now get to bed. I think I'm okay with it right now. I probably will check this again um, because this does get a little long and preachy, but at the same time, that's the point of this uh, is to kind of share that message. And if I come up with a better way of sharing this, that would be awesome uh, or a better idea of how to approach it. That would be great. Right now, it's, it's feeling like they just need to have this conversation this conversation, I think I mentioned it before, but uh, this is the kind of conversation me and my children have all the time. My, my children are my gatekeepers in a way. Um, they have the task of calling me out when I screw up or I'm doing something wrong. Uh, and then it's my job to own up to it as a dad and say, you know what? <laughs> You're right. I have screwed up. Here's how I'm going to fix it. And here's the better message I'm going to share with you. Um, and in the same way, then I'm able to call them out and let them know when they're messing up and they need to take ownership and fix it too. So 
So uh, this may not be everyone's family, but this is the dynamic from my family. So the, we'll just run with it for now. So I'm, I'm liking this a lot better, especially the way the family was more interactive. I'm still not sure it's where I want it to be yet. But for a second pass, I think this is getting it a lot better. So let me, I was going to wait, but I, I've got just a little bit more uh, attention and focus before I, I really do have to get to bed tonight. So let, let's go through it really fast. The Puff. Jerome's headless corpse rose and began to pursue Esther and Fred. Adam screamed, watching his two friends climb as fast as they could to get away. Tina, Greg, and Shanna moved towards Jerome, trying to stop him. They were more aggressive than Adam had ever seen them before. Only a week ago, they were happy and living in peace and harmony. Then the puff came, seemingly innocuous. Those closest to it began to change. Within a few days, Jonathan was gone, but his body kept moving as if controlled by remote. Where he was kind, peaceful, and lived only to make music before, he turned into a creature of nightmares, walking with a will that was not his own and becoming a host for strange white growths. While the infected became violent, the scariest part was that even without actual contact, the puff spread. It seemed to Adam that all, that all his little friends would finally fall prey to this fungal form of zombification. Rubbing his eyes, hands shaking, Adam sat straight and backed away from the anthill. Still watching the ants try to fend off what was left of Jerome the cicada's body, he was watching the now familiar puff escape the fungus on the corpse and land on their carapaces. Esther, Fred, and many others recognizing the danger were busy pulling debris to block the entrance, er, entrances to the anthill, leaving the most heroic outside to face their doom. Adam could see his family in the conflict. That would explain things since the Easter egg hunt. The puff must be getting them too. Dad said that Uncle Solomon was a mindless and uncaring oaf. Maybe he had become a zombie. Adam stood up, walked from the back fence line, and sat down on a chair by the fire pit. He practiced the slow breathing that he had been learning by watching his parents after their stressful interactions lately. Uh, and he looked around. Or, and then he looked around. His brow was dripping salt and his shirt was soaked. He would love to go to the pool, but nobody could drive him today. Instead, he watched as Patrick and Michelle, two of the chipmunks that had moved into his backyard last autumn, ran around after each other along the fences and over the garden beds. He could see the hole where Chuck, one of the neighborhood rabbits, had dug before spying at him and running back over to Mrs. Moncito's more open backyard. "'Mom, can I come in to play now?' said Adam at the back door. "'No,' came his mother's voice. "'Get a drink from the hose and go find some friends to play with if you're bored.' Adam made a face and said, fine, before shutting the door and stomping off. Making sure to shut the side gate behind him, he went down to the stream by the neighborhood garden. On his way, he scared Lydia, Jeff, and the new fawn that he hadn't named yet. You're not supposed to eat from the garden, called Adam. Old Man Sumner will get angry again if you do. Adam looked up because of the movement and noise as a medium-sized something hit the stream, sending up a splash. Why are you talking to deer, called Sadu through splutters. Why did you fall in the water, asked Adam, running up to the bank. Trying to grab a crawdad, and your talking made me lose balance. You get any yet? Look in the bucket, said Sadu, a jagged grin spreading wide as he stepped out of the water. There were five inside. Adam's best record was three in one go, and that was using hot dog bits as bait. Sadu went back to fishing, and Adam took a stick to play with the insect-like crawdads. I wonder if these will get taken over by the puff, too, said Adam. The what? asked Sadu. The puff, repeated Adam. The thing that's been turning all the cicadas and ants in my backyard into zombies. You got zombies, said Sadu, moving over to sit by Adam. So cool. How did you get zombies? It's not cool, said Adam. He was horrified at the thought. Sadu just didn't know. He hadn't seen them. Adam did his best to explain the zombie situation to Sadu, hoping that Sadu could understand the horror. Instead, Sadu got more and more excited, and Adam knew that for the next few weeks they would end up pretending to be zombies. They continued to talk and play until Adam saw his father's car go by on the main road. Dinner time, called Jennifer, Adam's sister. Adam ran to the sidewalk to head home with her. You think they'll yell again? asked Adam. Maybe. His mom said or his mom said when you can play with Alice or Aunt Agatha again? No, said Jennifer, sighing. When they went inside, mother was trying to calm down little Benny as he had been fighting off a rash recently. Dad's coat was hung up and he was looking in the open fridge like it was a puzzle that needed to be solved. When the phone rang, everyone jumped like an air raid siren had just gone off. Adam didn't dare move for fear of being noticed. Darn spam callers, said Adam's father, slamming the phone down and stomping back to the fridge. The mood was electric, and Adam couldn't seem to relax as his neck hair stood up. He slowly took off his shoes and was attempting to sneak to the stairs to get up to his room when his dad walked up behind... Ooh, let me check something really quick. Okay, sorry. 
Uh, he slowly took off his shoes and was attempting to sneak to the stairs to get up to his room when his dad walked up behind him and began to shadow every movement that Adam made. Adam turned and father remained behind him. He started to speak, but his dad blurted out at the same time, cutting him off. He raised an arm and his dad's shadow on the wall raised an arm. Adam started to grin, even though he was trying very hard not to. He walked straight up to a wall, turned quickly and said, Dad! What? responded Adam's father. Or, what? responded Adam's father, mimicking his tone. Stop being so grumpy and help me cook. You too, Jen. But I don't want to, said Adam, semi-flopping. Me neither, said Jennifer, trying to sneak to the basement. Too bad, said father, fully flopping with his tie skew. I don't want to adult anymore. You two got to cook the dinner. Dad, repeated Adam, stop being a kid. Don't want to. I'm going to be a kid from now on, and you have to go to work and take care of everything. Yeah, said mother. Jennifer, you got to take care of the baby, and I'm going on a cruise. Adulting sucks. Adam leaned against the wall and started to laugh, partially out of nervous embarrassment as his mother and father began to throw full-sized tantrums just the way he and his sister used to. As his father continued well beyond when his mother thought it reasonable to stop, laughter began rising from the family room, which felt wonderful until Benny began crying again. Dad, knowing not to press his luck, went back to the kitchen holding Adam's hand and they set about getting frozen meatballs in the oven while Jennifer got a pot of boiling water on er, a, a pot of water boiling on the stove for the noodles. When they sat down to eat, Adam was feeling connected to his family again. Mother was smiling and Dad was asking everyone about their day. Adam brought up Sadu catching five crawdads in one go but didn't say anything about the zombies. As Dad continued asking around the table and everyone got sillier and sillier with their responses, Adam felt a darkness closing in. He couldn't stop thinking about the headless Jerome and the more he thought, the more his chest hurt. After dinner came the nightly scripture and prayer and then getting ready for bed. Adam threw his now used floss in the trash and was just about to head upstairs as he passed by his father's office. His dad was busy getting his, his side projects finished up before he could go to sleep for the night. Adam paused for a moment at the door. He felt an impulse to talk to his dad, but the thought of disturbing him made Adam's heart beat faster. He also couldn't quite get his legs to work enough to move him toward his bed. Ignoring the problem seemed worse somehow than what he felt like he needed to do. Dad, said Adam. What's up, son, responded his father. Is Uncle Solomon a zombie? If I've ever met one, said his dad, not looking away from his screen. After another moment, Adam continued toward the staircase. When he put his right foot on the first step, the sound of Benny crying and his mother calmly cooing at Benny from somewhere up above stopped him. Adam nearly began crying himself. He needed comfort, but not the kind Benny was getting. He needed to understand, but the thoughts were too big for him to handle. Adam sat down and began counting and breathing. He would have to face his dad, really face his dad, if anything was going to change or improve. He did one more run through the breathing, and with a tight chest and a stomach that felt like rolling waves, he walked back to his dad's office. Dad, said Adam. What, son? Responded, er, what, son? Responded his father, frustration sneaking into his voice. Sorry, I need to look ahead a little bit. Um, are we going to become zombies now, too? Or are we going to become zombies, too, now? Hope not, said his father. Otherwise, no one else will be there to stop the horde. Now get to bed. I have a lot of projects still due tonight. But I don't want to be a zombie, said Adam. It would be horrible. I don't want Mom, Jennifer, or Benny to get their heads eaten. If it's anything like what happened to Jerome, it'll be awful. Why couldn't anyone have stopped Uncle Solomon from catching it? Isn't there anything we can do to help? Adam's father looked for up for the first time during their exchange. He looked long and deep into Adam's eyes, which were starting to fill. Adam blinked under his father's searching gaze and wiped the tears away before they could drip. Hold on now, said Adam's father. This isn't going the way I thought the conversation was playing out. I think you need to explain things a little more clearly to me. Sorry for bothering your work, said Adam, wiping his eyes again. No need for that, said his father. This is probably more important. Come in and sit. Adam did as he was told and sat in the little chair in the corner. Uh, now what's this about zombies, son? You said Uncle Solomon was a zombie, said Adam. I did, said Adam's father, but it wasn't meant to be taken literally. But zombies are or but zombies are real, said Adam. If Uncle Zombie or Uncle Solomon isn't a zombie, then why can't I see any of my cousins anymore? Is it my fault? Did I do something wrong again? No, son, you're doing just fine. If anyone in this family is to blame, it would be me. I disagree with a lot of the things your uncle and a few of the other family members have been saying and promoting. In fact, we're at such odds that it's become painful to be around each other, and I don't want you kids to get caught in the middle of the fight. See, Dad, that's what I mean. Is whatever Uncle Solomon caught spreading to Bob, Jeff, and Nancy, are you worried I'll catch it from them? In a way, son, yes, said his father, looking a little ashamed. I don't want you catching any wrong thinking. But, Dad, said Adam, you always told us that we should love people even if they believe different than us, that we have been taught or 
uh, that we have been taught how to love each other and help each other, and we know good from bad. Why is this different? Adam's father's brow bunched up tight as he looked at the floor for a moment before responding. You know what, son? You're absolutely right. I'm being a hypocrite, and I've been sending you the wrong message. We should love people, and I don't need to keep you from people with different ideas as long as we can still communicate and work through things. I'm sorry. I've screwed up, and I was wrong. It's okay, Dad. I love you. I love you too, said his father. Now get to bed. Adam began walking to the stairs, but stopped when he heard the soft lullaby from his mother floating down. If he went up now, he would wake up the baby, and he didn't want to get in trouble for that. He would have to wait a few moments until he was sure he could sneak into the room without causing a disturbance. Hello, Solomon, came his father's voice. I know it's been a bit, but I need to call and apologize. No, no, it was every bit as much me. I'm sorry. Adam snuck back to the doorway and peeked around the corner. Well, I don't want to get into that again with you. I just want to let you know that I love you and that I hope we get to see each other again soon. Maybe for the upcoming reunion, if it's still on. Uh, it's still on or else we can catch a game one of these saturdays it would be better to talk through anything deeper than that in person anyway i hope things have been going well for you adam pulled away from the doorway and stopped adam came his father's voice i do need you to explain what you meant by zombies are real but it's past your bedtime so please stop sneaking around and we can talk in the morning good night night dad said adam i'm just gonna get rid of this really quick Adam pulled away from the doorway, and then that's when his dad says that. Okay, his father went back to talking with Uncle Solomon on the phone, and Adam, smiling, tiptoed upstairs to dream about crawfish and zombie bugs. All right, so that's feeling much smoother for me. Uh, it's doing a lot better. Doesn't mean I'm done, uh, but it does mean I'm mostly happy with this second pass. For the next one, I will print this out and I'll go through doing any additional markups that I can find or think of. Um, I'll do a third pass next week. Um, and then after that, I'm going to send it out for people to look at, people to review and give feedback. If you have any thoughts on this as you're listening to this right now, uh, feel free to leave comments and let me know uh, what's working, what's not working. Um, but other than that, I will post another video. Hopefully next week I can keep on schedule with uh, the Thursdays that I'm doing it. So anyway, thank you for watching again. Take care.